Ahoy there, Captain Benzi here, coming at you with another developer Q&A video for Eve Echoes. For those of you who don't know, each week the developers of Eve Echoes take four questions, posed to them by the community, they respond to those questions, and post the responses both to the official Eve Echoes Twitter account and Facebook page. Each week I go through these four questions and their answers and talk about how I feel about those. I talk about what this could mean for the game if it were implemented and talk about the questions and the answers and give my own personal thoughts and opinions on these. Now I stress that again, these are my own personal thoughts and opinions. So if you're the kind of person browsing the internet in 2022 and gets offended by personal thoughts and opinions, you might want to close this video down now. Otherwise, let's continue. Now, if you have a particular question you would like the developers to answer, then head into the description of this video. There is a link there that will take you through to a Google document where you can ask your questions. If your question is one that is responded to, you will earn a month of Basic Omega, you will get featured in my video, and of course you get your question answered. Please try and ask some sensible questions. There have been some absolute blinders recently of questions that just exist, apparently, to get me angry and riled up. Now, if you do enjoy this, there's a whole playlist of these as well. You can go through and have a look at some other things that might be coming to New Eden at some point in the future. Otherwise, let's jump right in to the developer Q&A for the week of the 9th to the 15th of February. I almost said April there. Crikey, I'm wishing life away in order to reach that balance patch. Now the first question, Capsuleer Outposts have a skin icon on the fitting page. Will we ever see skins to change the model of our outposts? Now, Pixie responds here, but before he, she does, before they do, it's worth noting they have actually confirmed that Outpost and Citadel skins are something that they're working on eventually. This has been asked in the past and it's a really cool concept. And Pixie says, as you mentioned, it'll be very exciting to see Capsuleer and Corporation Outposts in their own skin. We'll release this feature at a proper time. So it is still being worked on. And this is so cool because there are so many different designs of stations out there. Now, having played EVE Online recently, jumped in back into that again, it actually astonishes me how many sort of station designs just are not used in EVE, e uh, in Eve Echoes. And we could have all of those and more brought back as skins. Now, I'm not saying just like visual color changes. I'm talking full on differences. Look at a station in a Mars space, look at a station in Kaldari space and how those vary. You might be able to change yours to look like a particular station or even to completely different types beyond that. There's so much really cool possibility here. And ultimately, it's cosmetic, prop, uh, co uh, cosmetic content that we're looking at here that is something that's easy to monetize. It's something that actually does get shown off. The problem with ship skins is only you really notice. Not many other people are looking at your ship. Um, so you don't get to show it off as much. Citadels and outposts are something you do get to show off a lot more. And the people who are owning outposts and citadels also tend to be the money people, tend to be the people who actually have money to spare to spend on the game. So it kind of seems like a no-brainer way to raise money for the game to me. And I'm really excited to see what they do with that one. Moving on, as an ex Rockal pilot from EVE Online, can we expect it to be added to EVE Echoes as a mass resource collector for corporations? And if we can expect it, then will it also be limited to low and null sec as well and have the ability to compress? Basically, the Rockal is one of the industrial ships that has been confirmed as coming in the May update, and it is the ugh, the analogy I used is it's the grand piano hurtling towards the fragile glass floor um, of the mining industry. Right now, I get that it's a really cool ship that a lot of people are excited for. I'm excited for it. It's a really cool ship with a giant panic button on it, literally. Um, it's an awesome ship. It's very exciting. But if we add it to the game as industry currently stands, it's going to be the grand piano slamming through the glass floor and just utterly destroying mining as we currently know it. Right now, mining is in a bad place. There's a surplus of ores. We can't get rid of them fast enough. That's causing a crash in ore prices that has just been ongoing since the game launched. Changing insurance does not fix this before you are like try and get all smart in the comment section. There are ways that insurance could be used to help this problem that it's not doing currently. Check out my video on fixing industry for more information on this. I feel like every video I'm going over this now, at least every dev Q&A. 
basically in mining needs some serious changes in the April balance patch before these ships launch in May. Now here and Pixie confirms that in the May update we'll be introducing three ore ships, the Noctis, which is in EVE Online actually a scavenging ship, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, the ability to sort of use like scavenging stuff and harvest more loot from uh, shipwrecks and things like that, the Orca, which currently exists in the game files, and the Rorcal. The compress feature of the Rorcal will appear in a new way, this is the ability to take ore that the other ships have, or even the Rorcal itself has harvested, and then turn it into compressed ore. Um, and as the key to the Corporation Mineral Collection, it will also be limited to low and null sec. It's also a capital ship, which is a key point. Capital ships don't go into high sec anyway. You can't take a carrier or a dreadnought into high sec. Um, so that's just worth noting there. It also means that the Raw Carl can probably be, if we're assuming things are going to go across the same way, the Raw Carl will be able to use... Um, things like sinusural fields and a jump drive to move between them, which is a pretty interesting thing. Um, I'll be interested to see how this works in Echoes. I'm still worried that we've not had any news on how mining is going to be fixed before these are added. Because seriously, if you're not in a fleet with a raw call when this lands, then you may as well quit mining right now. It's I, mm, I don't want to be dramatic, but it is literally that bad. It's a situation, it needs fixing, and it needs fixing before these ships arrive. Anyway, moving on to question three when I scroll the right way. Do you plan on adding more faction wargame modes other than the current ones? And of course it's Tailless Fox who, uh, who answers this one. Faction wargames in PvP is very much his thing. Faction Wargames is planned as a playground with different modes. After the Spring Festival holidays, we finished testing DIR Reflection mode with players and got a lot of valuable feedback about adjustments. <coughs> Some kind of matchmaking so it's not just battleships would be nice. This mode will have a permanent version. Also, we will add other modes, but we can't currently share details because it's only in the planning stage. So we're getting more Faction Wargames modes, which is pretty cool. I'm excited for this. Um, I'm hoping we get like a frigate dedicated mode. I would love to see modes dedicated to certain tonnages and things like that. I, um, there's, there's so much you could do here. I'd like to see, even see modes like capture the flag and point control rather than just straight up arena. So many cool things that can be done with this. And I'm really glad to see that they're not done with it. They're looking to add more as we go. Finally then, here's the dumbass question of the week. Is there any chance you'll make a PC client for EVE Echoes? Many other mobile games do this and I prefer EVE Echoes to EVE Online, but performance struggles in emulators. A native version would perform better. Now Lance.responds, responds, I'm going to read his response first before I open up. For now, a PC client is not in the plan. We focus more on adding a variety of game experience for pilots and optimizing the operation on mobile devices at this point. Look, I get it. I'm not going to sit here and go, oh, I'm not going to be one of those douche canoes that sits there and says, oh, you want to play EVE Echoes on PC? That's called EVE Online. No, it's not. They're two very, very different games. This is something I'm hoping to point out soon, you know, like more often and more frequently with EVE Online content. They are very different games, and EVE Echoes does have some notable advantages over EVE Online, beyond just the fact that it's on mobile devices. But the simple fact is, EVE Echoes is on mobile devices. The fact that you have to log in on a phone in order to create a new character, you can't do that via emulator, should tell you that the developers here have no real interest in supporting anything outside the mobile app. And that's a key point. Like, look, you're already developing for so many different devices. And you can sit there and go, oh yeah, but you know, it, mobile development's so eat No, it's not. Mobile development is an absolute nightmare. Speak to any developer who has worked both in PC gaming and mobile gaming. They will tell you mobile is by far the worst because there are so many different implementations of everything like it we're not just talking about like oh well pc's got different graphics cards and different processors we're talking about completely different screen sizes and resolutions and refresh rates we're talking operating systems we're talking and there's a big difference even between running something on a samsung and running it on like a OnePlus or my asus rog 3 or whatever underlying architecture from mobile devices varies dramatically and it is a mission to make sure that everything runs on every device nice and smoothly to the point that I've got a gaming phone a high-end uh, like 12 16 gigabyte RAM gaming phone that 
stutters with Eve Echoes in certain places, like you've seen in some of my videos where I'm showing a ship in the ship tree and it kind of has that graphical glitch where the ship flickers. That's because it's not fully optimized for my device. Now, you want to also add in all of the different PC stuff on there? I get where you're coming from. I get that you want to have a way to play Eve Echoes other than on your phone, but simply put, it's a mobile game. This is like turning around to like someone and saying, hey, I want your PlayStation game, but I want it to run on something else. Why? Where? The next point is as well, where does this stop? Oh, well, we've got a PC version. Okay, well, can we get a Nintendo Switch version? Can we get a, a PS5 version, an Xbox One version? And you might sound, think that sounds crazy, but we've got things like Stellaris on PlayStation and Xbox as well as on PC, so why not, you know? Development time is the answer to that question. There is only so much stuff that you can work on at any point in time. You need to decide what is most important to you, and developing something like a PC client is a lot of extra work, like a lot of extra work. Infinite Lagrange has a PC client, and it is the buggiest thing ever. Like, my old laptop could just about run it, but it would crash every few moments, and the new laptop is actually not much better. I tried it out just to see if there was any graphical difference, and it crashed like four times. Like, it's, it's not an easy thing to do. It's a lot of development time that I would rather they were using on actually making the mobile game work, not trying to turn the mobile game into actually a PC game. No. Keep going with an emulator. If you don't have a device that can play EVE, well, I, um, I don't know what to say here. Like, you know, what do you folks want me to say? That ultimately, EVE Echoes runs on fairly potato devices. If your phone is not capable of running EVE Echoes sufficiently, it might be time to look at an upgrade. Because that phone's not getting any younger, you're going to need to upgrade anyway. No time like the present, right? And if your computer isn't running it on an emulator, that's because Android emulation is utter garbage. Like, I don't know why, it's just, it's apparently Android is one of those things that is really hard to emulate actively and correctly, and it causes all kinds of crazy ass issues. So, the simple point here is that no, they're not working on a PC client, and they're not working on a PC client because they've got much more important stuff to work with. And I completely agree with that. Beyond that, we're getting new war game modes, which is pretty exciting. We're looking at uh, capture layer outposts and uh, corporation systems getting skins, and we're hopefully going to break, well, hopefully not going to break the game with the addition of the Rawkarl, the Orca, and the Noctis in May. April balance patch has a lot of stuff it needs to do before it comes along. Like, I'm really excited for that balance patch, but my goodness, it is bearing the weight of almost a year of anxiety at this point, and I'm terrified for what that means. Like, just the industrial fixes that need to happen are monumental, and if they're not right, and those ships launch in May, that causes us big problems. For those of us who have been putting up with an interceptor meta, with like lukewarm destroyers and stuff like this, again, if those aren't meaningly fixed in April, the point I'm getting at is that that April balance patch has very much become a make or break situation, and I don't like it when a game goes into that kind of thing. Like, no, this, this is something that I want to work, I want this game to last, and this balance patch is a very rocky point. If it lands well, then we're looking at years more of Eve Echoes. If it lands badly, it could cause some serious damage, and I really hope it lands well, because I love this game's pieces. Anyway, folks, that's this week's developer Q&A. Those are my thoughts and opinions on this one. Please stop asking for things outside of Eve Echoes, like whether or not we're getting a PC version, or can you change things for emulators and stuff like that. Please stop asking the same questions week in, week out. We've had some interesting stuff here. I'm looking forward to seeing where things go. And ultimately, the this does land on the developers as well because they're the ones that choose the questions would be nice if we could get some clarity for example about what's going to happen with industry in the balance patch because I'm nervous I'm nervous and I don't want to be nervous I hope it's going to be amazing I'm quietly hopeful that things are going to be amazing but there's always that little voice in the back of the head you know 
Anyway, folks, thank you for watching this one right the way to the end. Make sure to get your questions in using the link in the description below for next week's dev Q&A. If you want to keep me doing what I'm doing, either head over to Patreon in the comment section down below and in the description down below where you can pledge to support the channel or just let those ads play out. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching. Thank you for your endless support. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden.